Rest in peace, little peep. Poetry is in the streets. Jesus save us. Modernity has failed us. I'd love it if we made it. Yes, I'd love it if we made it. Yes, I'd love it if we made it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Geezerology on YouTube. We have Bob, Dan, Marissa up there in Missouri. I'm Scott here in South Florida, and we're all sitting together uh, through the magic of the internet. <laughs> the one, that wonderful invention by Al Gore. Okay, that clip I just played was a British band, the 1975. They were performing their hit, Love It If We Made It. That comes from their 2018 album, A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. Uh, Marissa is a fan of this band. She suggested that we have a discussion about this album. Uh, it was the band's third LP. They've since released a fourth one, but this was their third one. It was released in November 2018, uh, co-produced by frontman Matthew Healy, drummer George Daniel, and engineer Jonathan Gilmore. It was a number one album in the UK. I think all of their albums have gone number one in the UK, and, and this one hit number four here in the US, uh, mostly favorable critical reviews. Um, it was pretty much, uh, from what I can find, it was pretty much unanimous that all the critics liked this album. But uh, anyway, uh, Marissa, you want to start us off by telling us what you know about this album, this band, why you're a fan, et cetera, et cetera? Oh, yes. Um, not quite as in-depth as you just provided, which is so great. Um, but I love the 1975 band. Um, I've been a fan for several years. Um, what I like most about the band itself. Um, Maddie, specifically the lead singer, he um, kind of has always drawn me in. He's part of the millennials as am I, and he does a lot of like interviews and uh, there's a lot of YouTube uh, content that is him describing and breaking down his music videos. And he's a very intellectual thinker and kind of crazy. And so I really love the fact that I really got to like know this person that I was listening to. Um, also the album itself, has several of my favorite songs. Um, one, one in particular, love, you, love It If We Made It. I actually shared that song with my dad several years ago. I don't know if he remembers listening to it, but I really identified well with it because it was almost like my generation's version of a political statement or a, a world conscious statement of what's going on. And I loved it so much. And I, my, my dad always talked about him listening to music when he was younger about you know, what was going on in the world and like the angst or all the compilation of everything. And so that song specifically, I loved it for that fact. Um, and uh, there's a line in one of the songs, uh, give yourself, give yourself a try. And one of the lines is, uh, I'm a millennial that baby boomers like, and that's like one of my favorite lines <laughs> of all time. It, because I feel like I connect a lot with baby boomers. Uh, <laughs> kind of a joke there. Um, but Maddie is also a recovering, or uh, since 2018, I think, is a recovering heroin addict or has been. And so his journey and progression of being able to express his, what this drug has meant to him and feeling, and you can hear that in his songs as well, um, is really insightful. Um, and I think that over the um, albums, over the years, um, they've really tried different styles and um, really experimented with their own sound and didn't limit themselves. It's really paid off, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I haven't heard any of their other stuff. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if this is typical or if this if this album is uh, a, a stretch for them or, or I don't know. But uh, uh yeah, I, I get the feeling he's he's definitely is uh, uh, in, in his songwriting. He definitely is in the uh, Dylan school. Uh, you know, he's a little more direct than uh, Dylan could get a little oblique at times, and Healy seems to be a little more direct. But it's but it's that same school where you know a lot of uh, he likes to talk about uh, politics and what's happening in the world around him, and mm -hmm. giving his comment on it. Uh, yeah, this record 
uh, I know that his, his, uh, he went into rehab right in the middle of, of working on this album, right? Because, uh, from what I can tell, whoever writes these uh, Wikipedia entries on this band and these albums, you know, I don't know who's writing these, but they get real extensive, but they get, they get so deep and go so far down a rabbit hole. It's kind of hard to really <laughs> figure out what's, what's going on because it gets confusing. But uh, apparently he wrote, a, a, they'd worked up a few of these songs uh, back in 2017 summer of 2017 and then he disappeared into uh into rehab for a while and and then they resumed working on this album when he came back so some of these songs on this album were written before he went into rehab and, and some of them were done after he returned so it took a while to do it so we're we're getting both sides of the uh both sides of the bridge there <laughs> and, and some of these songs right um uh, and there's an interview with them talking about him coming out of rehab and being able to write songs, perform and travel and try to like put together his music in a way that he hadn't before. Cause he was, he, he had that vice where when he was making music and on that high, then he was writing that high thereafter. And he had talked about being able with the, the freeing feeling he gets when he performs music. And after he performs, he goes to this like, weird place where he doesn't know how to come down from that and the drugs at that point had given him that where he could kind of stay in the same space without having to go up and down up and down which you can tell in his music he really tries to articulate sorry just uh, add it. now now wh how does this album uh you tell me i i, I kind of tried to figure it out just by reading but but maybe you can you can tell me uh what what stands out about this album as opposed to some of their other music that they've done? I mean, is this is this is this pretty typical of, of them? I would say that it definitely has a vibe of the nineteen seventy five band of itself. So uh, progressionally, you can you can sense that. Uh, but in this album in particular, there is a it, there is almost like a liberating feeling of this album, where like the music definitely has. It, it, ha it definitely has the same feel, but at the same time, a different, like it just, you can tell he's going through something in the, in the way that he's seeing the, the albums before were a bit more poppy and a little bit more light, not as like direct and punchy. Like this is what's going on. Almost like abrasive. Some of the songs are when you listen to them and not in a bad way, just like yeah, jarring. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing that struck me about this one was, uh, it's it's a it's a fairly it's a fairly versatile. I mean, they're they're uh, they cover a pretty wide range of styles on this record, uh, and I, I'm just wondering if that if that was particularly for this record or if if uh, if the other ones are a little more straightforward than this one. The, but, I would say yeah, I would say they're a little bit more straightforward. But that's also something yeah. I really like about 1975 is they do try to change things album to album, yeah. still carrying that vibe. Bob, did you get a chance to hear this? Yes, I did. Thoughts? And? Thoughts? Okay. <laughs> well, let, me, let, me, let me give you my positive thoughts first, okay? Um, love the songwriting. Uh, he's got some great lines in here. And uh, Give Yourself a Try, I think it's a great song lyrically, uh, especially the line, you're getting spiritually enlightened at 29. Mm -hmm. Thought of my daughter right off the bat. <laughs> And um, when your vinyl in your coffee collection is a sign of the times, I love that line. Um, this is almost a concept album, which is kind of rare in these days and times because they deal with a whole bunch of interlocking themes, uh, the Internet, social media and how that's impacted people's lives. Um, you know, they have this song um, searching for it right now. Uh, second, the man who married a robot and um, and those are some really great topics to explore when you consider the impact that you know uh, social media the internet and all of these kind of things have had on on modern life particularly you know people like my daughter who are millennials so that was a really positive for me uh, really liked the songwriting um the, the downside for me was um, the music. 
And <clears throat> what I ran into was listening to this, the music almost became, I, would, I, was, I was sitting here listening to it and it would just kind of disappear almost like becoming kind of a background noise, almost like, you know, when they're playing music or something for you. It's there, but you're just not really noticing it. And I had to keep forcing myself to come back to it. And, you know, and there was, there was nothing to me that just said, oh, man, I got to turn that up, you know. And that was my big issue with it. it. It just, the music didn't really draw me in. And I guess that's maybe my traditionalism or my boomer coming out or what have you. Um, <clears throat> so give it an A plus for songwriting. I knock it down some for musical style. And, um, you know, there's a guy named Rick Beato who has, uh, does a bunch of stuff on YouTube. He's a musician and a producer, and he's actually done a very fascinating YouTube thing about why older people don't like new music. And he actually can explain it scientifically. And I can't give justice to what he says, but I think I fit into what he described as a person who well, put it in a nutshell so we know what what the what the uh, point is well it's 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 more about so much of modern music is atonal and we grew up with a different feeling for music and so the things that we grew up with aren't present in the new music so we we mentally just can't relate to it or most of us can't and like i say i <clears throat> He gets into much more detail than that. So, um, and it's like uh, Dermot Kennedy, you know, that we talked about earlier. Same thing. I loved his lyrics, didn't really care much for the music till I saw him live. And then he blew me away. And the clip that you played here at the beginning when they're performing live sounded much different than the album. So anyway, but that, that was my big problem with it was just, my my attention would just kind of drift away because the music didn't hold me. And uh, so what I did was I actually found a web page that listed, had the lyrics to every song. And I just went through them, you know, one by one reading the lyrics. And I was blown away by the thoughts they had in these songs and the message that they were trying to say. It's just the music didn't grab me. Sorry, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> that, was great. that was great input. I loved it. What about you, Dee? Well, let me preface by saying I can't give a really uh, <clears throat> genuine opinion because of last, not just the weekend, but the week, I only listened to maybe half the tracks. But I did like it, and I did uh, come across that page that Bob just referenced about the lyrics. I think lyrically there's a lot going on there, and uh, if it was a concept album, uh, as Bob said it may have been uh, a happy accident, but yeah, it addresses all the current themes of uh, modern angst of people in their mid late twenties. <clears throat> so I have to say that yeah, the lyrics, especially uh, the man who married a robot, I, I kind of I like that. Uh, yeah, that was a little spoken word piece that that <laughs> definitely stands out. It was, which it's quite kind of entertaining. Was yeah, in a very sort of a three or four degrees of separation, some of the spoken word that was big in the 60s and 70s by certain artists. I don't need to repeat because I don't want to get away from the 1975. But <clears throat> yeah, the music was, it was okay, but I, I should listen to it again more fully. Um, and and uh, I think there's definitely potential there. So, <clears throat> and then one more point about what Bob said about that it's, difficult for <laughs> boomers and geezers to fully appreciate contemporary music. I think not only scientifically, but emotionally. Uh, it's sort of tricky to try to compete with music and memories that you already have, even if the topic is relevant. Not taking anything away from, but you have to really almost force your, not force yourself, but just listen closely and I did not have the opportunity to do that Marissa on this um, <clears throat> in this particular case so in the ranks of, of high school grading I'll have to take an in I have to give an incomplete on this okay 
Well, I don't think Bob and I listen to the same album at all. <laughs> we rarely do, Scott. I think that um, I had read I had read something um, when um, looking kind of in in uh, research of the 1975 to talk with you guys about it. And something that really stuck out to me, and you guys can relate, I brought this up before, but uh, you guys grew up in a generation where you and your friends went to the record store and you picked out a record and then you sat and hung out with your friends and looked at the record, right? And you listened to the music. There was a, a, um, there was a, a process and an engagement, right? Uh, when I grew up, I grew up in the era of LimeWire, uh, down, downloading a bunch of different, for, you know, songs and then putting it into an iPod. And what I can really identify with the 1975, all of their albums is that in the very same sense that it is almost like background music where you have to force yourself to listen, it is the sole, not sole reason, but I very much enjoy listening to their albums while driving and riding my bike because it is so, it's, it's, it's almost like that background music is entertaining for me. And then you, and then I'm listening and you're driving or you're riding your bike. And then you're like, hear like, you know, uh, I'm a millennial, the baby boomers like, and then you chuckle to yourself or that I do. And I really enjoy that where you know, it is almost like a background music, but it comes together with that. And then much like Dermot Kennedy, where if you notice that the albums that I've shown you guys are a lot different than the live performances. And I think that both of these artists that I've shown you guys uh, have been individuals and bands that very much have their own, they have a, their own like I don't know what I'm really trying to say. I don't know. Like the music corporations say, hey, we want to put out an album that the masses can understand and listen to and we could put on the radio. And then you go to their shows and it's like, whoa, that is so different. But it, um, uh, it's the same songs that I had on the album. That um, brings a totally different uh, vibe when it's live. If you ever. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that's something that's so new. I, I mean, that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's something that, that's gone on through the ages. It, it's probably more pronounced now, but. But uh, but it isn't yeah it isn't something new. Uh, so there are I mean there 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 are bands from when we were kids that uh, uh, that, that people used to complain and the bands would complain themselves that they just never could get their uh, uh, their substance and what and and what and what and and the kind of music they're doing and the spirit that they were doing it and they and they were never successful they felt getting it down on vinyl, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's not different. It, it's probably, it probably just, uh, pre it, it's probably a, an issue that presents itself in a different way than it used to. But I think, but I think at the heart of it, I think that that's, that's something that, they, that they've struggled with since, uh, since I was a kid. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, cause you, cause you do have, you know, but I mean, back in the day when record labels were, were providing all the money. I mean, there were like a gazillion different record labels and a gazillion different bands. It was more, it was more diverse and more spread out and more uh, wide open back then than it is now. But, but, uh, but those record labels, I mean, they weren't, you know, they weren't running charities. They, you know, they, they gave you money and they, they put you in the studio and they, they financed you and they wanted you to produce something that they could sell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So, so there was, so there was, there were a lot of, uh, you know, back in the, I mean, uh, 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 John Fogarty wrote songs about it for decades about how, how management and record companies just screw him over and trying to force him to do things he wouldn't do. And, but other people, Grant Parker, a lot of people have written songs about that. Anyway, back to the 1975. Uh, I, yeah. It's like I say, I, I, I didn't hear the same album that Bob did. I, I, I thought this, I thought this music, I love this music. I love, uh, I love the, the, uh, the, the adventurous atmosphere that they brought to this music, you know, it, it what you get, I'm, I'm going to, uh, the first time I listened to this, I listened to the first two or three or four tracks, the 1975 was the first track, second track, give yourself a try. And then two time, two time, two time. And then into how to draw a petrichor. First time I listened to this, I was listening to those four tracks. I'm going, uh, 
Yeah, I was just it's another another band. It just it just sounds like somebody fiddling around with his laptop. You know, it's like it's like oh, I don't want to deal with this. And I turned it off, went to something else, and then uh, when I got in the car and I plugged my phone into my car, you know, I have it set on on Apple Music to where you know when you plug it in, it just automatically starts playing where you left off. When I plugged it into my car, then it then it uh, then all of a sudden started playing uh, "Love It If We Made It," which is a fifth track. And I thought eh, that that's a pretty good. Song. I hadn't I hadn't watched the video yet. I said, hey, "That's a pretty good song." And I went and looked. Yeah, okay, that turned out to be their big hit single from it. Yeah, that was pretty good. I liked that. And then from there on out, this this album blew me away. <laughs> I thought it was great. A little too heavy, uh, a little too overproduced, as as things are nowadays for the most part. You know, there's there's a little there's a little more electronic production in there than 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 I care for. But but getting past that, I I love this stuff. I I love uh, uh, I think it was a song uh, "Sincerity Is Scary," where he really slows it down and just sings a ballad, and then you have these. Uh, uh, trumpets blaring in the background i love that i loved it uh then he got into i like america and america likes me uh the man who married a robot the four minutes in that and then the song that i really love is inside your mind again where he just slows it down and the guy just sings a slow heartfelt uh does a little bit of crooning i loved it i loved it you know, it, it, it throws some horns in there, throw some strings in there, and and and, and very diverse. I, I I really like this song. I've listened to it four or five times now, and I get the same reaction every time. Those first three tunes, it's like it's like I'm going, God, this is horrible. But once we get into how to draw the fourth track and the fifth track, love it if we made it. That's where it picks up. From there on, I love this album. The first three tracks I did, I did. I, I don't, I don't know why, but you know, it's just the first three tracks. Like I say, it just, it just sounds like your standard. Uh, you know, let's sit around a laptop and get make some electronic noise and have somebody sing over it. That's what those first three tracks are to me. But the rest of it is very good. I, I thought the music was great. You know, the production of it is my only criticism of it. But that's, you know, that's how. That's how people produce things these days. I know we went through a decade of the eighties where I would say the same thing all the times. I hate the way this album sounds. Uh, I love the music, but anyway, uh, you look at the, uh, look at the track, uh, not the track listing, look at the, uh, uh, credits on this there. I don't know. I don't want to count them. There are, there are like, there are like 30, there are like 30 musicians on this album. (laughs) They have, uh, they have a string section where they credit e- each of the individuals. They have a they have a bass a, a bass. They have a uh, brass section, uh, which each musician gets credited for: uh, French horns, trombones, trumpets, bassoons, woodwinds, uh, bass at clarinet, woodwinds and brass. A lot of violas, a lot of violins, a lot of cellos, a uh, couple of xylophones. Yeah, I don't know. I I like this a lot, uh, uh, and 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 I I didn't I intentionally didn't go exploring and listen to any of their other albums because I just wanted to specifically focus on this one. You know, I, I wanted to I, I wanted to I wanted to get in tune with this one so I can have a discussion about it before I started going off and 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 exploring their other stuff. I, th- I think the next thing I want to do after after this is over, I'll probably go sometime this week and uh, listen to their their new one a couple of times, which is uh, t- 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 what is the name of the new one? Notes on a Conditional Form, which was released in May of, of 2020. So yeah, you know, over a year old. Uh, yeah, I want to go check that out later. Have, have you are you familiar with that one, Marissa? Uh, yes, I've listened to it a few times. I'm a, I am enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think you'll enjoy it as well. I think you'll enjoy their second album as also. Okay. More softer songs on that album as well. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I can't, I can't make too many comments on it now because, like I say, it, it, it's hard to really uh, talk in depth about something you've only heard three or four times. You need to get in there seven or eight, nine times and, and you know 
learn this learn these uh, songs pretty well before you can really uh, come in hard on them. But my my surface level uh, comment is that I was really impressed. I really liked this, and and I would I would like them to get into the studio with an old time producer and see what they sound like as a band instead of a <laughs> instead of an electronic band, you know. Uh, but I noticed too on that on that video. I didn't think I didn't think the video perform the performance we saw on video, which that was pulled from a uh, from a TV show in in uh, somewhere in Europe. Uh, That's a great video. Yeah, and uh, I I I thought that I thought it sounded pretty much like what the song sounds like on the album. It just sounded like a live version of it, and, and I also and I noticed that they were using canned. Some can some uh, some canned stuff on that on that uh, on that video performance of it. It wasn't all live. There were uh, because there were there were there were a few background vocals that I heard that nobody was singing, but they were programmed into the computer. And so you know, so that kind of you know, I'm I'm not used to that. I <laughs> it's like if you're gonna stand up there and perform, stand up and perform. You know, and not, don't you know we don't need any electronics. But that's me. That's that's geezer me. Uh, anyway, yeah, big thumbs up for me. I, I was really impressed by this one. I, uh, this this is this is your best one yet that you've presented to me. I like, okay. yeah. I do like it. Yeah, I yeah. actually became a fan of this one. Uh, once you get past those first two or three opening tracks, then then the thing kicks off and it really takes off for me. Uh, and I can't wait to hear more. Yeah, I had a feeling that was this that this was going to be the outcome because I know prior to this you'd asked me a couple times. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you think about this. And I thought, oh, okay, we got another one of these where Scott goes off on his avant-garde thing, and I'm going to be left behind as a traditionalist. That's not avant-garde about it. It's just it, it, it it's it's more it's more it's a little more experimental and more. Uh, uh, they stretch their wings a lot more than I. Uh, than I was expecting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know? I'm going to have to circle back to Rick Beato again and watch watch his dissertation. So I yeah, can I don't yeah more appropriately like... explain this, but um, this is a real simplification of it. But um, you know, I I am reminded of so many songs that the first few beats you know immediately who it is there's there's a hook that grabs you you know there's a guitar riff and and those kind of things and, and that's what's in my psyche and i started noticing and marissa and i talked about this a long time ago when she was learning to play guitar and um <clears throat> and i was listening to, to the music that she was listening to so i brought in some cds dumped them in her bedroom and said these are some of the guitarists that I knew back in the day. And I said, you really ought to listen to them. And what I had noticed is that so much of her music at that time, it was just rhythm based. You know, you didn't have a standout lead guitarist. You didn't get, you know, the, uh, the breaks where they did their solos. You didn't have, <clears throat> you know, those, those, those uh, riffs and things. And um, I was commenting on, that to her, you know, that I said, all oh, you have are rhythm guitar players. Where are the lead players? You know, and um, so that's kind of where some of this still a little bit leaves me behind. You know, I haven't been able to open my mind up to not hearing that. And um, so you know, I that's guess not I'm, a that's not a generational thing. That's a that's a that's an individual taste thing. I've 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 never been one for for big old flashy bust out uh, show offy guitar players. Uh, you know, I, you I know, know, well, I'm I'm a frustrated guitar player who never <laughs> mastered the instrument. You know, so so I love guitar and and I love guitar driven music and. Um, so, um, and that's kind of what I miss these days, but there's a, 
there's a there's a much more intellectual explanation from Rick Beato. Yeah, I, 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 when you said and, when you use the word atonal, it's like that. That really, I, 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 and that and that may not have been the right. Yeah, word. I, I, so, I, I, you know, I, I certainly, I certainly didn't get that there was anything atonal about this. So, so I'll have to go back and, and rewatch that and then bring it back sometime and be able to better explain what he said because the way he explained it i said that with, yeah that's me so but like i say I, I i love the lyrical content i love the thoughts behind it um just wish it would have been guitar bass and drums you know then well give it let, let's 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 do this maybe maybe we can start doing doing this from here on out uh give it give it a star rating let's go around the horn marissa give 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 uh uh, give this album a star rate. I, I keep saying this album because it's a mouthful and I keep thinking, I'm <laughs> gonna, uh, you know, afraid, afraid that I'm going to stumble over it if I try to say the name of this album. Let me go back here and get it in front of me. A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. Rate it uh, uh, one to five stars. What would you give it? Oh, just personally, I'll give it a five. I love it. I love every song. I can sing along every time. So love it. Bobby. Oh geez, <laughs> just yeah, just just your gut reaction overall. Give three. it three. D D's going to give it an incomplete, right? Because you haven't <laughs> listened to the whole thing. Incomplete or TBD to be determined. Uh, <laughs> D didn't do his homework. He was out there following the great American pastime. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go but uh, I'm between three and a half and four. I it, it's not a five star for me because like I say like those first three tracks I'm just you know I've you know four or five times through it I just like okay let's get these over with and get to the good stuff and and also the uh, and also the uh, just the overly sleek production value just you know me but but yeah three and a half stars which which mm -hmm. uh which despite those problems that i just mentioned that means that that the real meat of the stuff is really freaking good to bring that to bring it up from you know huh. from the problem well, that's interesting because yeah. you said you love this so much but you and i have given it almost the exact same numerical rating well uh that depends on what your on, on what your scale is i guess <laughs> I, I, mean, I, yeah, I, wanna, asked, I, I I want to say four, but there's just enough there's just enough things that I don't like about it that four makes it feel kind of high, and, it, and it's those specific things that I don't like about it. But there are there are a lot of specific things that I love about it. If I could, if those three or four things, if if they started at track three. And then had a little less sheen on the production. It, it would approach five, but I just like I, I I love I love the experimentation that they show on this on this album. They're they're not they're not afraid to uh, they're not afraid to try things, and 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 most of most and most of it works. Most of it works. Well, and, if you would have given me two two ratings, one for lyrical content. And then the other for music, the lyrical content would have got a five. Okay. Yeah. And um, <laughs> just you know, so I, I, that's my big thing. See, Again, you and I, you and I listen to albums different ways. I kind of get a, I, I got the sense that this was a real personal, uh, uh, a real personal and political album. That that there was a there was a message going on here. I, I get that sense from listening to it. But that's mm -hmm. that's usually that's usually I start I start going there after. After I after I hear the stuff that I really want to hear, which is the uh, which is the structure of the of the music and the overall sound of it, and, no, uh, and, and sort of the emotion that that comes out of it, I, yeah. I just I thought know, it was good. Yeah. So I'm you know it's words and music, and I'm a words guy, <laughs> you know. And so you know I read what he's written here, and uh, yeah, there's great social content, there's great political content, and he's got some intensely personal stuff here you know, talking about, you know, his addictions and dealing with that. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, like you mentioned at the very beginning, you know, have, hey, we've all come together here today via the internet. And he hits on those kind of themes. Right. And, um, I mean, know, I did catch that. I, obviously, on the one I married a robot where, he, you know, it's like that was pretty easy to uh, to follow along with what he said. Yeah, but if you, if you look at the yeah. title of the album and then you look at the content, a lot of these songs, that whole um, 
theme of um, <clears throat> connecting via the social media and and that's that's a theme through a lot of the songs. Um, it may not be the only theme, but I think it's through a bunch of the songs. And um, so, and uh, let's see. This 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 has one of the worst album covers I've ever seen. And, <laughs> you know, but I'm not, I'm not deducting any points for that because album covers aren't that big of a thing now like they used to be. And I also noticed that on, on their new album, Notes on a Conditional Form, it's, you know, it pretty much follows the same theme. It's just basically, it's, it's like, you know, they, they just decided not to hire a graphic artist or something. It's just a white album cover with a type on it. But on the, uh, on, on the one that we're talking about, uh, the conditional relationships or online relationships or whatever the name of the album is, uh, where the, uh, the, the title of the album and then the, the track listing is they have printed on the front of the album, but it's printed sideways on this white background with, with like, with like about a, a dozen little, uh, di different colored pixels, like spread around the, uh, white. it's like, you know, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like don't 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 be afraid to hire a graphic artist. <laughs> but hey, you know, if you're on a budget. <laughs> Do we have anything else we want to talk about here on the 1975? I just have a quick question for Marissa about the record. Yeah. So you said you listen to this a lot when you ride your bike or you're in your car. <clears throat> what sort of mood does it put you in or, uh, you know, state of mind? I know it's not a toe tapping album. Does it just put you in a more reflective uh, state? And, and that's kind of the music you, you know, you, you have more of a kindred spirit with as opposed to, you know, down and down and dirty rhythm and blues. Um, I, I would say that I enjoy the, like, underlining melancholiness of their music. Um, I have never been one to be like, like dwell and be sad or uh, anything, but I am very much a person that can, um, align with heavy emotions. And I'm, you know, I consider myself an empath, but I stay on this very, like, not that their music is like super jazzy and poppy, but it keeps me in this, like, just like everything is all right. I don't know. It just, it, it's a very, uh, it uplifts me in the same degree, keeps me thinking like, oh man, yeah, that this is happening or someone is going through this or man, that's tough. I don't know. I really enjoy it, but I do also enjoy like, um, mellow things that are like folky and stuff. I just thought this would be an interesting album for all three of you to listen to. If I actually could have guessed your guys' reactions and I would have taken a bet, I would have won. And I think that... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, we're getting predictable. <laughs> but thank you for the question, Dee. I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. I really like it. I really like those two or three songs where he slows it down and, and it just has have a little... Uh, a you should but a little bit off key horns going off in the background i really like that i really you like should listen to uh if i believe you uh, i think it's on their second album which did w win a few awards um anyway if i believe you is a slow song and it is phenomenal okay i'm i'm, I'm gonna i'm going to probably go through their catalog in the next couple of weeks uh yeah because i want i do want to hear more uh i'll tell you okay. what marissa i got a challenge for you yes yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Get your guitar out. Oh, I'm not going to play. Uh -huh. I'm not, no, right no, 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 not right now. Okay. But, <laughs> um, get your guitar out and sing these songs accompanied by an acoustic guitar. Tape it and send that to me. <laughs> okay, for sure. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. Okay. Acoustic guitar and these lyrics, I could get into. <laughs> I'll do that. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. That was our discussion of the 1975. Thanks, Marissa, for bringing that record to our attention. 
Uh, you know, if you haven't heard this album, uh, some of you, uh, some of you in our generation and our age group, if you're listening, if you haven't heard this album, uh, give it a listen. I think you might find something to, about to like. It's, it's, there's, there's quite a bit here. Uh, so anyway, uh, please subscribe to our channel, Geyserology on YouTube. We're here twice a week on uh, Sundays. We, uh, we dip into the news and talk about the news a little bit. And on Wednesdays, we will examine some piece of music uh, and mostly, mostly albums. But we do that on Wednesdays. On Sundays, we do the news. So uh, uh, next Wednesday, uh, Dee's going to lead a discussion about a new album, Jackson Brown's new album called Downhill from Everywhere. So that'll be next week. Uh, next Wednesday, this Sunday, we'll be back with uh, Geezerology Gazette with a little bit of news. And thanks for joining us, everybody. So long.